All I wanted to do was make a remote control boat. We had just got a 3D printer so we could quite easily design a hull for it. And then we could just add a motor, a battery and a rudder. And then we'd have a boat. How hard could it be? It turns out it's not so easy. I really didn't expect it to get out of hand the way it did. The first thing to decide was what sort of hull design to go for. There are all sorts of hulls for fast boats. But the fastest is a hydroplane. Speed is good. So that's what I decided we would make. That turns out they have a reputation for being difficult. Here's our first design. The idea that it should plane across the water with only the back of the main hull and the front two sponsons touching the water. Unfortunately, it didn't get beyond bath testing. The front floated okay, but we'd miscalculated the weight of the motor, speed controller and battery, and it suffered from a certain lack of floatiness. We're going to need a bigger boat. Back to the drawing board, or the computer in our case. We made the front two sponsons larger, made the hole wider and deeper, and added an extension on the back. One week of 3D printing later, and here it is. Much better. Looks fast too. Version 2 made it past the bath, so we took it out for a test. I forgot to video what happened because it only had one brief run and didn't exactly go to plan. The problem with the boat is that the motor in here is really powerful and because we placed a propeller under the boat, when we accelerate it sucks all the water out from under it. This then means the boat then collapses into the hole it's dug and then it launches itself out of the hole then it lands back on the water, then it does the cycle again. Kangaroos around, really. Back to the drawing board again. We kept the front half, but the back half had to go. We moved the propeller much further back, so it didn't dig a hole under the boat. This meant we needed to move the battery and electronics in front of the motor, which means we needed a longer hull. That's a good idea anyway, because if the propeller does dig a hole, most of the boat doesn't fall in. Another week of 3D printing later, and we've got a much bigger boat. We also did our best to make sure the motor and electronics don't overheat. When it's moving fast, water should come through the small hole in the rudder, go up this tube, through to the motor and cool it, carries through the cooling pipes to the electronics and leaves at this side. We've also got a wing on the back to try and avoid doing a Mark Webber if we bounce off a wave when we're going fast. I'm hoping that this will help keep the boat flying pointy end first. So, how did it work? Well, firstly, version 3 didn't kangaroo, so that's a start. But I needn't have worried about it taking off, as it's more like a pregnant platypus than a hydroplane. I also discovered why cooling inlets on boats are a bad idea. Spray came in from the front and got the radio receiver wet. This messed with the signal to the rudder servo and it decided it only wanted to turn hard right. This wouldn't have been a problem if there wasn't an island in the middle of the pond. The boat spiralled in, ran aground and started to sink. That water was freezing. <laughs> so this oscilloscope is showing the pulses from the receiver to the rudder servo. And when I turn left, the pulses get shorter. When I turn right, the pulses get longer. When the receiver got wet, the pulses got smeared out, which meant the servo thought the pulses were longer. This meant it thought that the receiver wanted the boat to turn right, when actually it wanted to just go straight. Why is it so slow? Well, firstly, the sponsons seem to have two main problems. Firstly, they're not wide enough, and secondly, the water leaves the back of them at a level angle, when really it should be pushed down a few degrees to provide lift. So new sponsons it is. With much more planing area and a better ramp, we also redesigned the air inlet to block spray and added a bigger propeller and tried again. At least it didn't need to go swimming this time. Actually, it's starting to show some speed, but it likes to go sideways and is nearly impossible to steer. 
I had a backslide. I'm not going to make the turn. Thanks. I have issues. It doesn't steer. To fix the steering, we changed the rudder for a longer one and added a turning vane to the right sponson. So will version 4 finally work? Yeah. Oh, no. No. I did not expect that. <laughs> I think we finally cracked it. This version is pretty quick and it turns nicely. So, can we go even faster? This run is with a 3 cell LiPo battery delivering 11 volts. We can just about fit a 4 cell battery delivering 14 volts, which should allow our motor to deliver its full 600 watts, if it doesn't catch fire. More power is good, so it had to be tried. <laughs> That's quicker! I can definitely tell it's quicker. <laughs> <laughs> That's an issue. I'm going to try not to turn at high power. I think that's my issue. Speed! <laughs> so how fast is it actually going? Well, from the analysis of video frames against the background, the best run we managed to achieve was around 88 kilometers an hour. But we also analysed the sound frequency and the propeller is spinning at around 34,000 RPM, which is pretty crazy for a plastic propeller. With the propeller pitch we have and 34,000 RPM, the boat should max out at around 85 to 90 kilometers an hour. So that agrees with the video. Hydroplanes really like smooth water. And what happens when the water is not so smooth? They usually get airborne. But our boat, when it bounces, doesn't want to fly. Oh, I saw that. In fact, we may have gotten a bit complacent about that. Well, that was problematic. The boat had a high speed crash and snapped the boat in half. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. Better, stronger, faster. So after our rebuilding from our crash yesterday, we've added a larger prop shaft and larger propeller. So we're not quite sure what's going to happen. Debris in the river can be a really big problem. I hear something. So sometimes evasive action is needed. see how it's prop riding. The main hull is completely out of the water. Of course we had to get some on board video, so we put a GoPro on the left sponson. Maybe a different view would work better for that.
We've learned a few unexpected lessons over the last month. Like what happens when you get water in the steering servo. It's okay. I only ever wanted to turn left anyway. What happens when you get water in the radio receiver? Ah. Seems that after a radio glitch, the ESC needs to restart. <laughs> what happens when the water cooling tube gets blocked? It feels like it doesn't feel as light. Oh, lost power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the motor burning up. Good job we've got a rescue kayak ready. Successful rescue mission. <laughs> success. Partial success. Does it really need a rudder at 80 kilometers an hour? <laughs> yes, it seems it does. God is dead. When it works though, it works really well. Can we go faster still? Well, the current 600 watt motor and the propeller are fairly maxed out now. It takes about an hour to quick charge the battery and three minutes at full power to run it flat. The battery is great for warming your hands afterwards though. But we've now got a new 1.8 kilowatt motor. I wonder what we can do with that one. 